You got zero at the table, man. All kinds of shit breaks loose. Pick me, pick me. Zero's at the table, you gotta be careful. All kinds of shit breaks loose, baby. Greetings, humans, and welcome back. I'm Joey Pigtails, and this is episode number 13 of my poker journey. This is a 2-5 PLO session filmed at Orange City Racing and Card Club on the afternoon of Friday, September 13th. I know I haven't posted a video in a while. I've been a bit busy helping my son move back into college and getting reacclimated uh, to my house in Orlando after staying at my parents' house for a couple of months in the summer uh, with my son and nephews. Now that I'm back home, I'm getting back into the swing of things and focusing on getting lots of hours into the poker tables, and I'll be looking to post more vlogs at a faster rate over the next couple of months. After the hands, stay tuned for uh, story time. A few of you have asked about how I came up with the nickname for the poker vlog, and I'll, I'll be telling that story in all its glory. This is another wild session, seeing me get tilted a bit and playing some hands a little too aggressive preflop, so get ready for some fun. With that, let's jump into the hands. In the first hand I see at this 2-5 PLO must-move table, I look down at 10-10-7-7 single suit and open at $25 over a limp. With three calls, we see that beautiful 10 of clubs right in the window, flopping second set on jack 10-5. When checked to me, I bet my hand firing a pot-sized bet of $100. The player behind me folds, but the small blind and under the gun both call. With a 4 on the turn, I go ahead and jam for 375 when checked to, and both players fold, allowing me to pick up a nice pot right off the bat. A few hands later, I see my first ace-ace combo of the session. Ace-ace, king-3 with one suit. There's a button straddle to $10, a couple of limps, and I fire a pot size bet of 55, which sees two calls. On a flop of 754, one club, one spade, one diamond, I check this back when checked to, as it's clearly not an ideal flop for my hand. The turn is the four clubs, and now an early position player leads for $150, which really doesn't, uh, doesn't make much sense, as I'd expect straights and sets to lead this flop. I go ahead and call to evaluate the river, as I'm more than likely ahead at this point, although I probably should have put him all in to take the full equity. On the Six of Hearts River, the opponent now jams for about 175, and since I'm getting a good price, I can't fold now, even though I say in real time it's a horrible river and I'm probably beat. The opponent rolls over 7 8 King 10 with King High Spades for the rivered straight. Ah, okay. The next hand I look down at Queen Queen Jack 9 Badoogie. The $10 button straddle is on again, and with four limps to me, I open it to $70, and sadly it's folded around. I do at least pick up the $40 in dead money though, which is extremely important in this type of game. The very next hand, I look down at another ace-ace combo. Ace-ace-9-8 with, with one suit to the nine. With one limp in front, I open a $25 and see three calls. With $100 in, the flop is 10 8 2, two clubs, and it's checked around. The turn is the six diamonds, and it's checked to a late position player who bets $75. An early position player calls this, and even though I have a gut shot straight draw, I can't continue here and elect a fold. From the small blind, I look down at queen queen 10 7 3 spades, and decide to limp since I'm out of position. We end up going six ways to a flop of ace queen 2 rainbow. We never expect anyone to have an ace-ace combo here, so I should have the effect of nuts. I go ahead and lead for $60, and surprisingly, it is folded around. We take this one down. From the big blind, I look down at King King 10 3 1 suit. There's an open to $20 from, the, from under the gun, a call, and the player in seat 1, who's been really active, now pots it to $80. There's a call from the button, and I go ahead and rip it for 355 effective, looking to take down this dead money. It's folded to seat one who ends up making the call, as does the button, and we're going three ways to a flop. And that flop comes ace seven deuce two clubs. I see the one card I really didn't want to see. Seat one checks, and the button now jams for 355 total. Seat 1 then tank calls, and the button ends up taking this down with two pair, aces and deuces. <sighs> At least my read on the situation was right. Time to rebuy. At this point I move over to seat 1, as I like sitting next to the dealer, although in retrospect this is a worse camera angle. 
I limp in with Queen 10871 suit from late position, which should be a fold, but I'm looking to play a lot of hands with these really active players, which has been calling down really light. We go four ways to a flop of Queen Jack 7, and I flop top and bottom pair with backdoor potential. The small blind leads for $20, and three of us end up coming along. The turn is the five of clubs, which doesn't change anything, and the big blind now leads for $100, which three of us all call again. On the Ten of Diamonds River, that same player now bets 200, and I can't continue, and decide to fold. From the button, I straddle to $10, and another player re-straddles to 20. The next player raises to 50, and I make the call with Ace Queen Jack 9 with Queen High Spades. Two more players call before the double straddler raises to 250. Having four cards nine or higher in my hand and already having $50 in, I'm not folding here, so. After another player calls to 250, I jam for my remaining 275. On a flop of 422 rainbow, I've completely whiffed this flop. The board runs out with a 10 and a 7, and I miss it all. <sighs> Alright, another rebuy. And here's a bomb pot. From late position, I look down at King Queen 8 5 no suits, and we see flops of 9 6 5 rainbow and King 8 4 rainbow. I have top two on the bottom and a pair plus gutter on these rainbow boards, so when check two, I fire pot of $200. The player on my left calls, and everyone else unfortunately folds. The turns are the seven of hearts on top and the three of spades in the bottom, and we end up getting it all in. The rivers are the ace of hearts on top and the six of clubs on the bottom changing nothing, and we actually end up chopping this pot as the... We see an under the gun open at $20, two calls, and I look down at double suited kings. Ace, King, King, Five, Spades, and Diamonds. I decide to pot this to $110. The big blind calls 110 before the under the gun player jams for 600 plus and has me covered. A short stack player calls off as 125 or so, and I go ahead and call off my 455 total, and we end up going four ways to one board of two of hearts, queen of clubs, ten of clubs, six of hearts, four of clubs, and I brick all of this. Ah, all right. Time to buy in for a fourth time this session, and try to turn this around. Up until this point, I've made a bunch of questionable calls preflop with marginal hands, largely due to being on tilt from losing with my really strong hands. And now we arrive here. There's a limp for 5, an open to 25, a call, a min raise to 50, a call, and a re-raise to 100. What the hell is happening here? I go ahead and jam for 385 with 7765 double suited and diamonds and hearts, and we end up going four ways all in preflop. The single board is run out, and we see 9 of clubs, ace of hearts, 3 of spades, 4 of clubs, 6 of hearts, and I hit runner runner for the nuts straight. Let's fucking go, baby. Aces and kings can't win for me, but this awesome hand in the low end sure can. With that, I'm sitting on about 1500 and well on my way to being unstuck on this day. Oh yeah. In the next hand, I see another beautiful starting hand. King, queen, jack, nine, double suited, and clubs and diamonds. There are three limps to me in the small blind, and I go ahead and open to $35. With four calls, we see a flop of 6-4-8 with two diamonds, giving me a queen high flush draw and not much else. I check, as does two other players, and we see a bet of $90, which I decide to float, as does another player. On the turn, we see the nine of spades, giving me a full wrap to go with my diamond draw, and while I can certainly lead this as a bluff, I decide to check in real time to see what develops. It checks to the flop aggressor, who bets 225, and now I have to decide on raising here or calling to see a river. I think raising is better, but in real time I decide to flat and see a river, and the other player folds. And the river is the perfect queen of spades. And I go ahead and check, hoping to see another bet, but the other player snap checks back, and I show down the nuts to take this pot and get back up to even for the day. You'll see me do this sometimes with the worst ace-ace combos, which I decide to do here from the big blind with ace-ace-seven-five suited to the seven. Without a nut suit, this hand is essentially set mining out of position versus a field that doesn't like to fold preflop. There's a $10 straddle and a couple calls before the straddler raises to $60. One other player calls and I call to see a flop of 10-5-7-2 clubs. 
I flop bottom two pair, but this isn't that strong, and I check and flow to see it check through. The turn is the Queen of Diamonds, and this card should improve one of these players, so I check again to evaluate, and it's checked through again rather quickly. The river is the beautiful seven of spades, and I now have a boat. I fire 150, looking for a crying call, but it's folded around and I pick up this $190 pot. The next hand occurs at the main game. We see a $10 straddle, a raise to 25, a call, and I call with ace, king, queen, three. We can certainly argue for a re-raise here being double suited, but I'm looking to evaluate the table dynamics before getting too froggy. With four of us in, we see a flop of king, eight, three, two hearts, giving me top and bottom pair. The early position player bets 100, and since I have a king in my hand, I'm thinking this player is betting a flush draw. So I call, and the button calls. The turn is the eight of hearts bringing in the flush, but it pairs the board and the initial player checks, as do I, and the button. The river is the three of clubs giving me a boat, and it's checked to me again. I'm pretty certain I'm ahead here given the action, so I fire 250 into 400 hoping for a call from what I expect is that nut flush that is assuming I'm bluffing here. I do end up getting that crying call, and the opponent bangs the table in anger after seeing his flush is no good. Without a straddle on, the under the gun player opens to $15 over a limp, and I look down at King Queen Jack 9 double suited on the button, and I elect a 3 bet to $60, which ends up seeing two calls. With a flop of 889 rainbow, I flop two pair, but this isn't an ideal spot, and I go ahead and check when, when checked to. The turn is a three of hearts, and now a player leads for 55, and I call, as does the other player. The river is the four of clubs, and now the same player leads for 150. I'm not exactly sure what to make of this bet, so I fold, and the player ends up showing a busted flush draw, and my nine would have been good for two pair. Food for thought. In this hand, there are a couple of limps around to me, and I thought someone straddled a ten, but was mistaken. On the button, I look down at three aces and a jack with uh, two clubs and toss out $10, which ends up being a raise. In a full ring game, we usually want to see a cheap flop with three aces, even with a suit. Another player calls before the aggro player from the must move table earlier pots it to 55 with $100 behind. And the three of us come along to see a pot of $220. With a jack high rainbow flop, uh, I should be good here, so when the initial Razor jams for his $100, I call when it's folded to me, and my one pair ends up being good to take this pot down. In the next hand, there is one limp to me, and I open a $25 with King King 7 6 one suit. Our aggro player min raises to 50, and the limper calls, so I call not looking to bloat this pot with ugly kings. With 150 in, the flop comes oh so favorable, King Jack 4 Rainbow. The initial 3 better jams for 90, and the other player surprisingly calls this bet with about $300 behind. I, go, I decide to go ahead and put him all in right here to see another angry fold. I show my set of kings, and the board pairs in the river to give me another pot. Well, that was certainly a volatile session. I was clearly on tilt after the first few rebuys. Ever since I stopped smoking cannabis daily, I found myself being quite irritable and easily tilted, so I've been focusing on a variety of things to try and manage that tilt, but I'm having some issues in that department still. With more time and effort, I'll be able to manage it better, so we'll see how I develop on that front over the next few months. So, a few of you have asked about the name Joey Pigtails. It's really catchy, right? Here's the scoop. As many of you know, I've been playing in some private PLO games for a few years on the weekends. I've made quite a few friends through these games and have had quite the array of experiences. One late night during a session, one of the players in the game motioned for the woman who was serving our drinks to come over as he was holding up a black $100 chip for her. He said the chip was hers if she could come over and braid my hair as he looked over at me with a look expecting me to say no. I'm not the type to stand in the way of anyone making good money, so of course I accepted and told her to come over and make her money. And she did. As she was braiding my hair, another player in the game was co commenting on her efforts and blurted out, Man, we're going to have to start calling you Joey Pigtails. And man, the name was so catchy that I just ran with it. Ever since, more and more people started calling me Joey instead of Joe, as well as just referring to me as Pigtails. 
All the true grinders in these games end up with nicknames, and this was sort of a rite of passage for me, so I ran with it. One last thing before I go. If you're looking for a PLO coach to help you get better at this game, hit me up and we can talk about the options. Learning the fundamentals of this game and developing the mindset necessary to be a long-term profitable player in PLO isn't easy, and I may be able to help you learn both the hard and soft skills necessary to navigate these games and turn some profits. Thanks again for stopping by and supporting my journey, and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Doing any and all of those things help me to reach a broader audience and reach my goal of monetizing the channel. Until next time, I'm Joey Pigtails, and I am transparent, reminding you to be a good human. Bye!